Hello, welcome to Beachcation.com. My name is Colin Mahler and I will be your instructor today for the Daisy Mail bracelet. Uh, the Daisy Mail is a Japanese chain mail. It's a Japanese 12 in 2 weave, which means that uh, the Japanese mail is generally larger rings laid out side by side and then connected by smaller rings or oval rings. We'll be using smaller rings today. Uh, this is a 12 in 2 pattern, which means that there are two large rings stacked on top of each other and connected to all other rings around it by 12 smaller rings. We are using two different ring sizes today, obviously a smaller uh, ring size and a larger ring size. The larger ring size is a 4.5 millimeter and a 19 gauge, which is kind of an odd wire gauge. And then the other size is a 2.7 millimeter and a 20 gauge. And I apologize for the odd ring sizes. I wanted this pattern to have a specific look and I just kind of played with my wire and my ring sizes until I came up with the look that I was going for and this happened to be the sizes that I was using. So there you go, that's why we're using these sizes because that's what I came up with. Um, so if you're ready, grab your pliers and your jump rings and let's go make some daisy mail. So this is our daisy mail bracelet. This is the project we will be making today. This is formed using a Japanese style of chain mail. The Japanese chain mail has uh, larger rings that are set out, laid out next to each other and then connected by smaller rings or sometimes oval rings. And sometimes you'll even see this done just all in one sized ring. Um, if you see it all in all one size ring, it tends to be a lot more open and, and spacious um, than when you're using smaller rings to connect the larger rings together. It brings it in, um, tightens the, the weave up a little bit, and uh, just gives it a nice, delicate look. Uh, this is a Japanese 12 in 2 uh, pattern. The 12 in 2 indicates that every two rings, so all the large rings are doubled, there's two. Um, all the large rings um, are connected together by 12 smaller rings. So all the rings in this pattern are doubled. There are two of the larger rings stacked on top of each other and then connected to all the rings around it by two smaller rings. So to make your Japanese uh, daisy mail bracelet today, you are going to need two pairs of pliers, one pair of chain nose pliers, and one pair of bent chain nose pliers. So we will be using two different sizes of jump rings to make this project. We will need 114 of the 4.5 millimeter 19 gauge jump rings, and uh, 228 of the 2.7 millimeter uh, 20 gauge jump rings. Uh, both those millimeter measurements are taken off the inside diameter of the jump ring. And you will also need some sort of clasp. Any type of clasp will do. Uh, we'll be using a toggle clasp today. So before we can begin making our daisy mail bracelet, we're going to have to prep all of our rings. When you get your jump rings, they're neither all the way open nor all the way closed. So you have to either open them up all the way or close them up all the way before you can begin construction of your piece. So on this chain, all of the small rings, the 2.7 millimeter 20 gauge rings are going to be opened and all of the uh, 4.5 millimeter 19 gauge jump rings are going to be closed. So we are going to start with opening because that's quick and dirty and it's a good place to start. Um, my tools, I have, um, I'm right handed so I use my chain nose plier in my right hand and my bent chain nose plier in my left hand. And the tips of the bent chain nose pliers should always be pointed towards the outside of your hand. You don't want the tips pointed towards your other tool, otherwise you're battling with the tips of your tools as you're trying to make your chain. So I'm going to pick up one of my little jump rings here and I'm going to put it into my chain nose or my bent chain nose plier right here at the bend and I want the opening of my jump ring kind of up at the 12 o'clock position pointed straight up at the ceiling. Um, it's also a good idea to uh, keep your thumbs on top of your tools instead of gripping like this. You have more control over your tools and your thumbs don't bang into each other as you're working. 
So I have positioned my jump ring in my bent chain nose plier, and now I'm going to grab the other side of this ring. Now, as you're opening and closing your jump rings to prep them, you want to avoid grabbing your rings with just the tips of your pliers. That will warp your rings out of being flat. They'll be a little bit wavy and they won't lay quite right. So you wanna hold on to your jump ring with as much of your plier as possible. So I'm gonna, see all that? <laughs> so I'm gonna grab the other side of my jump ring with my chain nose plier, and I'm just gonna give it about a quarter of a turn away from me. Like so. And you want these nice and open. You're gonna be going through four, a total of four rings with each of these smaller rings. So you wanna make sure they're nice and wide open. We'll do that again really quick. So again, I'm taking my ring, I'm positioning it in my bent chain nose plier with the opening kind of straight up at the 12 o'clock position. Grab the other side of the ring with my chain nose plier. Now my pliers, if they are pointed, if the tips are pointed straight up at the ceiling, I'm gonna grab this side of the ring and I'm just gonna twist it until the tips of my pliers are pointed at the wall in front of me. And that should be just right for your opening. Now let's go over closing. So your larger rings will all need to be closed. And this is a little trickier and takes a little bit more practice. So once again, I'm gonna position my jump ring in my bent chain nose plier with the opening up at the 12 o'clock position. I'm gonna grab the other side of my ring with my bent chain nose plier. Let's see if we can get a good angle here for you to see this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rock the two ends back past the point. So I'm gonna rock the two ends um, back and forth until, and I'm, I'll be exerting, there's a very tiny little gap between the two ends of my jump ring that I'm trying to close up as I'm rocking the two ends back and forth. And so I'm gonna be exerting a very gentle inward pressure as I'm rocking here. So I'm gonna grab the other side of my jump ring. I'm going to rock the two ends back past the point where they meet back again, and it may take two or three or four tries until oh, you get it. Now, if you heard that little click, let's see if I can get it to do it again. So that click right there was the two ends um, of the jump ring actually hitting each other, which means that they are actually touching and will be nice and flush. So now what I need to do you can see that the two ends of my jump ring, while they are touching, are a little bit offset. So I need to line up the two ends of my jump ring there. So I'm just gonna grab both sides and I'm just gonna kind of wiggle the two ends until I can get them to line up nicely. And ultimately, you don't really wanna be able to see the seam in your jump ring, but again, that takes a little bit of practice, like so. So go ahead and open up all your small rings and close up all your large rings, and we'll get started putting our bracelet together. So we are going to start, and we are going to make our all of our daisies first, or at least a couple, um, and then we'll start connecting them together. So we're gonna start making our first daisy. You will need 14 of your larger jump rings and 28 of the smaller jump rings per daisy. So I'm gonna start with one of my small open jump rings and I'm going to put four of my closed rings onto it. And then I'm going to close this ring. And I'm going to take another open jump ring and I'm gonna go through all four of those large rings again. Oops, all four, make sure all four are on there. There we go. And then I'm gonna close this ring. Now I'm gonna split the large rings in half, so I have two and two. So I have two pairs of rings, large rings connected by one pair of small rings. 
and take another small open ring and I'm going to go through one of those two pairs of the larger rings and I'm going to add two more of the large closed rings onto it and then close. And take another of your small open rings, go through all four of those same large rings again. So now I should have three pairs of large rings connected together with two pairs. Oops, whoa, whoa. Easy now. Two pairs of small rings. Let's see. Lay that down. You can see it. So now what I want to do is I want to take both ends of this little piece and swing them around and then I'm going to connect them together with two small rings. So I'm just going to kind of hold these two rings in place next to or these four rings in place next to each other. And I'm going to scoop through all four of them with one small open jump ring. And then I'm going to close that ring. And add a second one right next to it. And you always want to add this second ring once you start closing up this shape. You always want to add that second ring towards the outside of the piece as opposed to towards the center of the piece because it'll be really tight to try and get in there and close it. So you want to add that ring about here instead of down in here. So you're always working from the inside out when you're adding rings to a piece. So now you've got a little triangle. And our next ring, so we're, now we're going to take this piece and form it into a diamond. So our next rings will go about there and we will be making two connections here. So I'm going to take a small open ring and I'm going to connect it to any one of these three rings on this piece. It doesn't really matter where you connect it. It will all work itself out. And then I'm going to put two large closed rings onto this one small open one. Try to anyway. And close it. And add a second ring. A small one, of course, and next to the first one. And I don't think I've opened my rings wide enough. I'm kind of struggling a little bit. Alright, there we go. So I've got that second ring on. Close it up. Okay, so now I have my triangle with a little extra something hanging off the top there. Now I'm going to swing it around like so and I'm going to attach it right here with two small rings. And these larger rings sometimes get a little bound up. You just kind of got to wiggle them and pull them and they will come unstuck. All right, so now I'm going to add my second small ring out here and close it. All right, so now I've got my little diamond. And I am going to choose, so I have a diamond that's got two longer sides and two shorter sides here. 
I'm going to pick one of the shorter sides and that is going to end up being the center of my flower so I'm going to build out the rest of the petals from here. I'm going to pick this up and pick up another small open ring and go ahead and link that through the short side of the diamond and add two of your closed rings onto that open one. Close this ring. Add a second small ring there. So here's the center of my flower here. I have my three petals. This will be my fourth. This daisy will have a total of six petals. So now that I have the fourth petal attached to the center, I need to swing it around and attach it to the petals here. Or on the other side, it doesn't really matter. So again, I want a small open ring. And I will go ahead and hook those four large rings together. Close it and then add your second small ring in the same place. half a flower there, two-thirds of a flower. So I'll go ahead and add our other two petals. So once again, starting on this center ring here, I'm going to link a small open ring, put two closed ones onto it, and close. And add your second small ring. Okay, so working right along here. So now, of course, I need to connect this petal. Now that I've connected it to the center, I'm going to come connect it to the petal next to it. Again, with two of your small rings. And go ahead and add your second ring. All right, so almost there. So we have one more petal. It's going to go right here. So we're going to have a total of three connections to make on this last petal. We'll connect it first to the center and then to the petals to either side. So once again, with that uh, small open ring, I'm going to come in with that, to that center ring. With my small open ring, I'm going to connect my two large rings onto it and close that up. Add my second ring. Okay, 
Okay, so now it's connected in the center. I'm gonna come over to the right and make the connection over here. Add your second ring there. Woohoo, almost there. One more connection to make and we have our first daisy done. So where are we? We need to connect these last two petals right here and then we're finished with our first daisy. string. Oops. All right. Voila. We have our first daisy done. So depending on the size of your wrist, you will need anywhere from five to maybe eight daisies altogether. Um, so I would go ahead and make, I don't know, maybe at least four more daisies, five if you think you have a larger wrist or six. <laughs> um, so go ahead and make a few more daisies and then we'll start connecting them together. So have you made all your daisies? I have. So let's talk about putting them together. Uh, so this bracelet I have here has a total of six daisies and with the clasp attached, it's a little, uh, it's about seven inches long. Um, so looking at this, each of your daisies measures, especially once we get the connecting rings um, in between them, we'll measure about an inch each. Uh, so that should make it fairly easy to guesstimate how many daisies you might need. Also keep in mind that you will need to um, add length for your clasp and how much length you leave will depend on the type of clasp that you use. Um, and remember that on a toggle clasp, um, you don't really want to measure the bar end of your clasp into the final length because it sits up inside this ring. Um, and you do want to add, um, I have three pairs of small rings that are connecting the bar end of the clasp to the um, bracelet. And that will just give me a little bit of length so when I go to pull the bar up through the ring, I have some length to pull up through um, through there. Um, that's also a good idea if this is this bracelet's a little tricky to size because the, you can't really uh, just take off a, a little bit of your daisy. You have to take off an entire daisy or add an entire daisy. So if your bracelet's just a little bit short on length, even with your clasp, you can just add a couple extra pairs of rings on the end to give yourself a little bit extra length. So now that you have your daisies all made and ready to go and you have some idea of about how many you need, um, now we're gonna go ahead and start connecting the daisies together. Now, as you can see in the finished piece here, um, I like to take an extra large ring and kind of set it down in between the two daisies. And then I will end up making a total of four connections, two per daisy to this ring and it's just a nice solid connection and it kind of helps uh, the daisies keep their form. Um, but you can be as creative as you want and connect them together any which way. You can take them and connect them with two small rings by a single petal if you choose. You can kind of offset them and connect one petal to two petals here and here like so. You can connect two petals together, two small rings per connection here, 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 and here. 
So really, how you connect them together is up to you. I'm going to show you how I connect them together, though. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my connecting ring to one of my daisies here. So I'm going to take one small open ring, and I'm going to link it through any one of the petals on my daisy. And I'm going to take two of my large closed rings put it on that open ring and then close it. Oops. And then I'm going to add a second ring there. Okay, so now I'm going to connect this ring to another of my petals. It doesn't matter which one, it can swing around either way. So I'm going to take another small ring and I will make that second connection there. My second small ring here. Close it up. Okay, so now I have added my connecting ring to one of my daisies. So right here. And I'm going to take a second daisy and I'm going to attach it like so between two petals, so I'll be connecting here and here. With two small rings per connection, of course. So now I'm gonna take one of my small open rings. I'm going to go through the connecting rings that I just added, and through any one of the petals on, my, on a second daisy. And then go ahead and close up that small ring Add your second small ring there. Okay, so now I have one more connection to make. I just gotta swing this daisy around and I'll be making connection here between these two rings. Right here. So I'm going to go through with one small open ring, I'll go through that, that connecting ring again and through another petal on that second daisy. Close up that ring and add a second ring right there. And close it up. And now we have two of our daisies connected together. So then you're going to carry on. You're going to go ahead, add another connecting ring here, connect your, another daisy, and continue, carry on until you have all your daisies connected together. One ring on either end, and we'll attach the clasp to those rings on the end. Here I have all my daisies connected together and now I'm ready to add my clasp. I just need to add um, those connecting rings again on either end and then I will attach my clasp to those right rings on either end. So I'm going to get a, an open ring, a small one, and I'm going to connect it. So if you look at this here, you want to add that connecting ring straight across from this one between these two petals. Right, getting all this. So go ahead and put your small open ring through either one of those two rings. Put your two closed rings onto that small one, close it, and then add your second small ring there.
All right, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to swing these rings over here and then I will make the connection right here with two small rings, of course. So I'll go through those rings on the end and then swing around and go through that petal. Make sure you go through both rings of the petal and not just one. Close the ring and add your second small ring there. Okay, so there is one end all finished off, except for the clasp. So I'm using just a simple toggle clasp on this. I'll uh, attach my ring, the ring end of the clasp, to these rings on the end, and I will use two of my small rings to do so. So I'll take a small open ring, I will go through those two rings on the very end of my chain, and I'll take the ring of my toggle, slip it onto that open ring and close it. And because the loop on my toggle is big enough to do so, I'm going to go ahead and add a second small ring. And these rings, while they're small, they're also 20 gauge, so they're a little thin. So I highly recommend finding a clasp that you can put at least two of these small rings through the loop on. It will be a much more secure connection. So there's my second ring. So there I have the ring of my toggle clasp attached to the end of my chain by two small rings. I'm going to flip around to the other end. I'm going to add my connecting ring here on the very end again. So take a small ring, find those two petals that you're going to put that uh, connecting ring on. Go through one of them with your open ring, put your two closed rings onto it. Close that ring up and add a second small ring there. going to go ahead swing them over or flip it over and swing it and make my second connection. So I'll be going through this other petal and the rings on the very end. Close that up and then add that second connecting ring there. We're almost done. All right. So now we have that ring there on that end of the chain and I'm going to go ahead and connect the bar of my toggle to these two rings on the end. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use three pairs of these small rings to connect the bar to the end of my bracelet. And again, I'm doing that so that I have room to pull the bar up through the ring of the toggle when I go to close or uh, close my bracelet up. So there's my first pair. I'm going to add a second pair onto that.
Okay, there's my second pair of rings, and now I'm going to add my third and final pair of small rings to the end of this, and I will attach the bar of my toggle clasp to these two small rings. So get that, uh, get one small open ring through the last pair of rings on the end of your chain, pop the bar of your toggle onto that open ring, and then close it up. And go ahead and add that second ring. Close it. Ooh, we're so close. Close that ring. And we are finished with our bracelet. So now that you know how to make all your little Japanese daisies, uh, you can go ahead and play with them. There's a, they're very versatile. There's a lot of different things you can do with them aside from linking them all together this way uh, for a bracelet. Um, instead of linking them together with jump rings, you can always wire wrap beads in between. And here I've just set some crystals in between them so you can kind of get an idea of what that would look like. Um, I have some 6mm and 8mm bicones in between. You can alternate sizes of beads. You can use all the same beads, use different colors, whatever. Totally up to you. Um, and you can also take these daisies and make a pair of earrings. You can do two daisies. Huh? Huh? What do you think? Should we try two daisies? We stack two daisies on top of each other. Maybe connect them with a crystal and an ear wire and a little dangly on the bottom. Lots of possibilities. So take your daisies once you have them made and kind of set them out, play with them, see what you can come up with. And most of all, have fun. All right, well, so we just made some daisies and some daisy mail. I hope you had a really good time and you got lots of fun ideas on how to use all your daisies. Maybe necklace, match a pair of earrings, a couple of bracelets. Use your imagination. Have a great time. If you have any comments or feedback for us, please feel free to contact us here at beachcation.com. Thanks a lot. See you next time.